So if you've seen a reconstruction of me solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded in world record time, you might have seen me use a lot of these weird algs with brackets around them. These are called commutators, and if you know how they work, you can more or less learn the exact same method I used to solve the cube blindfolded in record time. So let me show you a simple example of that. Let's say we wanted to swap around these three pieces at a time. And that's essentially what this method involves, cycling around a couple of pieces at a time while leaving the rest of the cube unaffected, which is why we can keep track of everything. So the first step to figuring out how to solve a three cycle case is to look for the interchange layer. So that just that's just a fancy way of saying, how can you directly swap two letters with each other in a single move? So for example, we could, do that to move C to where G is, and we can do that to move G to where C is. So we can use this as our interchange layer or our conveyor belt, so to speak. This wouldn't work because that moves this to here, but not to where C is and vice versa. Next step is to find the insertion. So after figuring out, we can use the U layer as the interchange. The insertion gets what's not on the conveyor belt. So in this case, D into one of the conveyor belt letters. So we could do something like this, that gets D to where G was. We could do something like this, that gets D to where C was, or even something whack like this. Same thing, but it's just like worse. Don't do that. The third step is to figure out which one we do first. Do we do the conveyor belt move first, or do we do the insertion first? In order to figure that out, we need to figure out which cycle we're trying to do here. So right now, what I'm trying to do is cycle around the buffer piece and have the buffer piece go to where G is, that's an ugly G, and have G go to where D is and back to there. And this would solve the case for GD, essentially. If I were to insert straight away, I would get D to where G is, but that's not what we want. We want D to go to where C is, because that's part of the cycle, and what I just said before isn't. If we do a U prime first, so the interchange first, and then we do the insertion, note how D is going to where C is. This is part of the cycle. And then what you do for the second half is that you just literally undo what you just did. So undo that interchange, undo that insertion, and voila, your cube is solved. Okay, here's another case. So. We're going to use this as the buffer and we're going to solve this three cycle case. The first step is to find the interchange layer. So the only thing I can really see here is to use this one. So cycling around these two at a time. And the second step is to find an insertion. So the two I see um, are this. So this gets A to where U is. So one of the two conveyor belt letters. You could also do D R prime D prime that gets that to there, but that's slower, so we're not going to do that. Third step, which one comes first, the interchange or the insertion? So if we do the insertion first, boom, boom, that gets A to where the buffer is. So our buffer is now at U, and then now that goes to J and that goes to A. So that's what we're trying to do right now or as you usually see it in memo, like JA, or in this case, GD. So if we insert this to here, that works because we're getting A to where U is. That's exactly what we're doing here. So we do the insertion first, and then we do the interchange. So we just move the other letter on the conveyor belt to wherever the insertion happened. So we do that by doing an M2. You just undo them both. Also, if you used M2, you would have done this like unintentionally, like without even realizing it. So this thing that you call a setup is technically an insertion in commutator um, terminology. And this M2 is actually an interchange. So I guess it still swaps two letters, but it's technically called an interchange. Then you do that. And then you kind of solve this like you'd solve the target for A. So. In other words, most of your M2 alt are technically three quarters of a commutator, the more you know. However, most commutators involve setup moves as well. So what I've just showed you so far are called pure commutators, so basic, usually eight move commutator type. These ones have more moves, so 
This one has um, 10 moves because it's essentially just a one move setup to this exact same case. So notice how I'm just moving this piece to where the G location is while keeping these two intact. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this one as well. So if we do that, notice how I'm setting up these three stickers to the exact same location as this pure out that I just showed you before. And once you do the um, setup move, you just do the exact same case as that, and then you undo the setup. Same here. So you just do the setup, the same case as this, which you learned before, and then you undo it. Oh, also fun fact, if you swap around the interchange and the insertion, you get the inverse ALG. So this would solve the case for DG. Anyway, through using a lot of different commutators, we essentially solve two pieces at a time instead of just one like the beginner's method. The buffer piece is always included, as you can see by these bracketed letters, hence why we subtract one from the three in the three cycle to make solving two pieces at a time. If you take apart the cube, you'll notice that there are 20 pieces total. So we have 12 edges and eight corners. So 20 divided by the two pieces we solve at a time equates to about 10 algorithms on average. And if you've seen some of the algorithms I've done so fast, you'll probably know that they're really damn fast. And yeah, that's my very brief explanation on how I solved the cube blindfolded in about 10 seconds if we cut away memorization time, because you don't see me start solving until about seven seconds in. If you want to see me spend not just a few minutes, but rather hours explaining the same thing and much more, be sure to check out my Blind Solving Masterclass waitlist in the description down below. So that's it. Subscribe and dab on the haters. Bye.